I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Well, it's that time again, Rama Praise. We're so glad to be with you today. Yes. And I, I feel like I have a subject today that I think will help a lot of people. It's called, Is There Any Gas in Your Tank? And you know, when we're doing our cars, we have to keep a check on the gas or we'll run out. And I haven't done that in years now, but I've done it before. <laughs> I remember, honey, one time that it was kind of panicky. Yes, it years was. Years and years ago, we were actually in a motorhome. And um, we did not, you did not realize. Well, that was when I was traveling as, uh, for dad as his crusade director. Uh -huh. And we'd be out on the road for a month or two and then even come back in. Yes, and we were in Colorado. And you know, in that motorhome, there was a reserve tank. So you thought you had a reserve, you thought you had. Well, we come down I-25 out of Colorado into uh -huh. New Mexico. Uh-huh. And so, but when you switched it over, you had already used the reserve. And it is like, oh my goodness, we've got to find a fuel station. And that was quite an adventure. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> and okay, I have to say this. It's because, I mean, we're believing God. You know, we got, you got to help us to find a station because it was in a place to where there well, wasn't a lot of well, stations. Well, it, it was, it was late in the afternoon and there was just a lot of little town. I pulled off of the, I pulled off the interstate two or three times, couldn't find a station. And so, so finally, so we're believing God. Okay, God, you've got to get us to where for for fuel. And so we finally came up to a station. Well, the fuel was kind of high. And so Pastor is very frugal. He didn't want to pay that much for fuel. And so he said to me, think we can make it to the next station? And I said, my faith stops here. And man, he just went into that fuel station. That was a fun, well, it was kind of yeah. a funny moment. <laughs> but you know, we need to keep a check on ourselves yes. spiritually. Uh, all of the things that we encounter in life, all of these things, that, situations and trials and turmoil, they all tend to do, tend to drain us yes. spiritually. Yes. And actually, uh, one of the scriptures that I'm using, I'm talking about uh, David. I talk about David. Actually, I, I use David a lot, but he he'd been in a great battle and nothing mm -hmm. had nothing had gone right. But he realized that he needed to go to the Lord. And it says, and he and he encouraged, encouraged himself, himself in the yes. Lord. Now there come a time that you and your tank uh, you don't need to let it run dry, no. but you need to keep keep that. Keep that going. Anytime you go through a, a situation, always, always go yes. and pray and talk to God and, and build yourself back up. So let's go now where I'm talking about, is there any gas in your tank? Have you ever, have you ever run out of gas? Anybody ever run out of gas? Well, about half of this crowd has. I don't know about, I figure most everybody has, but, uh, Maybe you just don't want to admit it, but. <laughs> In 1969, I had a, I was associate pastor, my father-in-law there in Garland. I had a 65 Ford that you had to push it to get it started, especially if it was cold because the valves were so burnt. And so, in fact, my uncle had a, he had a he he had an auto place where he made auto parts and stuff, and I would take it over there to his where his manufacturing area. And they had fixed it. The last time I took it there, he told me, "Son, take this car to the junkyard and pay him five dollars to take it." <laughs> That's how bad it was. It was bad, wasn't it, on? And Dad was preaching there in Dallas. And uh, he, he called me, and he said a lady came up to me tonight and asked me if you needed a if you needed a car, and he he said he said I told her he sure does. <laughs> she 
She said, well, I was praying. The Lord told me that he did. You tell him and his wife to go to any dealership and just pick out any car they want. And so that week we went and picked out a 1969 four-door hardtop Rocket 88 Oldsmobile. But that is the same week that Craig was born. On Tuesday of that hot July day, about 102 or 3 degrees, I think it was, I picked him up from the hospital. <laughs> yeah, I picked him up on Friday. He was born on Tuesday. That's right. He was born on Tuesday. And uh, so we're headed home, and he's in the back seat, and Lynette's there, or she's holding him in the front seat. And uh, all of a sudden, that car started sputtering. And I looked down, and that guy's gave I have been so excited over a new car and a new son at the same time. I have forgot to get gas. And, and it was empty. But Lynette will tell you, I jumped out of that car while it was still rolling. I put it in neutral, and it was still rolling. And I pushed that car for about a half a block by myself. I, was, I guess my adrenaline was flowing. You know, I was 20, oh, 20. Eight years old, I think. I was 30. I guess I was 30. And I pushed it about a half a block, and I saw, I, when I jumped out, I saw a station sign down there, and, then, and there was a little incline, and I was about to run out of gas physically, and this little incline going, and I managed to get it headed down that incline. I went in there, got some gas. But I, I don't think I've run out of gas since then. So the title of my message tonight, Is There Any Gas in Your Tank? <laughs> when you run out of gas in the natural, it is a great concern. But you should be just as greatly concerned when it happens to you spiritually. In 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 6, it says, Three days later when David and his men arrived home at their town Ziglag, they found the Amalekites had made a raid into the Negev and, and Ziglag, and they crushed Ziglag, burned it to the ground. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they couldn't weep no more. You might say they ran out of gas. David's two wives, uh, Anna Holm from Jezreel, and Abigail, who the widow of Nabal, Nabal from Count Carmel, were among the captured. David was in great danger because all his men were bitter about losing their sons and daughters, and they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord. Another version, the King James Version, said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Everyone needs to encourage himself in the Lord. You know, he had nothing left. He was at his wit's end. The men were at their wit's end. They'd been in a great battle. Now they come back home and all their possessions, their families are all gone. And so David realized that he had to go to the Lord to be encouraged. Maybe you've been in some of these conditions where something's happened and it's taken everything out of you. It's, you're exhausted. It's drained you spiritually. Now, don't look at me like that because we all come in, we all have those situations in our lives and our ministries. Maybe it, it, you know, if something's happened that's drained you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, maybe it's a family crisis, maybe it's a medical crisis, maybe you lost a loved one, maybe you're in financial stress, Maybe you're in a dangerous, unsafe situation. Times of conflict and betrayal sometimes can really drain us. All these things are a huge part of draining us physically, mentally, and spiritually. Our tank runs dry. Periodically, you got to fill up that tank in your vehicle. We got to do the same thing spiritually. 
And God has a vast supply that doesn't ever run out. Now, for the ministry we're here, we have a lot of ministry vehicles, buses. In fact, you're going to be riding on those shuttles tonight and other vehicles. And we have a, we have a, and we got a diesel bus and we got some other diesel equipment and we got a diesel tank and a, and a gasoline tank down there at the maintenance. We got the pumps there. And ever so often, Cameron, our grandson, that's in charge of the garage down there, he'll say, Nana, we, we're, we're almost out of fuel. And we have to refill the tank. Hello. You know, we begin to see Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost. And he said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. In those days I'll pour my sir, I'll pour out my spirit on my servants, men and women alike. God has enough spirit to pour out on every generation. Notice he said, I will. God is willing to refresh you and strengthen you. He wants you to be filled with power all the time. You know, as we begin to look at all this, it's great to get refreshed spiritually from time to time because we need that. You know, now I'm going to read Acts 3, 19 here, and it says, Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that you, your sins may be wiped away. Then, I want you to repent, then times of refreshing will come in the presence of the Lord. Another translation says, pour out showers of blessings to refresh you. Now I realize that most of us in here have repented our sins, and if you haven't, you can do it tonight and everything will be all right. But I want to look at that phrase, times of refreshing. From looking at that scripture, then, it tells us that times of refreshing are possible, okay? We come together to have a move of the Spirit like we have here at, at WBS, to replenish, to refuel. I mean, I grew up in the church. Dad was evangelist and pastor part of the time. And we would go to special meetings like camp meetings and seminar, uh, winter, prayer, winter prayer conference and that's where the ministers and the people would come and the word was preached and the move of the spirit and people would be refreshed and renewed and go back out in their ministries. It says in Acts 1-8, and we all know it, but you will receive power. or We receive power when the Holy Spirit comes up to you. You'll be witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Now, we received power when we were filled with the Spirit. But if you don't keep replenishing that, if you don't keep being refreshed and refilled, you'll find yourself at the end of the road and don't know what to do. There's, in Smith Wigglesworth's book, he says, there is nothing impossible to, man, uh, to a man or a person, we could say, filled with the Spirit. When you're filled with the power of the Spirit of God, Spirit of the Spirit, God will work wonders wherever you go. Now, we need to understand that we're going to come up against all kinds of situations. And many of you sitting here tonight have been in some tough situations the last couple of three years. Even this year, when things are loosening up a little bit, there is still some pressures that are coming. But you're able to do supernatural things and you're able to accomplish 
your vision and what God has called you to do only by staying full of the Spirit, being filled. Supernatural things come because you are filled up. In Acts 13, there's an interesting story where Paul and Barnabas, it says, 8.13.6 here in LT, after they traveled from town to town across the entire island until finally they reached Papos, where they met a Jewish sorcerer, a false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He had attached himself to Sir Genius, the plus, who was an intelligent man. The governor invited Barnabas and Saul to visit him for they wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimaeus, the sorcerer, as his name means in Greek, interfered and urged the governor to pay no attention to what Barnabas and Saul said. He was trying to keep the governor from believing. Saul, also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit and he looked at the sorcerer in the eye and then he said, you son of the devil, full of every sort of deceit and fraud, an enemy of all, good, all that is good, will you never stop perverting the truth, true ways of the Lord? Watch now, for the Lord has laid his hand of punishment upon you, and you'll be struck blind. You'll not see the sunlight for some time. Instantly mist, mist and darkness came over the man's eyes, and he began groping around, begging for someone to take his hand and lead him. When the governor saw what had happened, he became a believer, for he was astonished at the teachings about the Lord. Now, Paul was able to speak this to the sorcerer because he was full of the Spirit. Now, we have probably all met people that are trying to withstand the gospel. But that doesn't mean we can go around and say that everybody, everybody who resists our preaching that we can strike them blind. <laughs> but Paul did this because he was full of the Spirit and the Spirit showed him what to do. You, you, the Spirit can't show you what to do if you're not full of the Spirit. Now, Paul and Barnabas, they preached all over. And they were in the city of Antioch in the south part of, of the region of Galatia in Asia Minor. And they got run out of town. Acts 13, 49. So the Lord, Lord's message spread throughout that region. Then the Jews stirred up the influential religious women and the leaders of the city and they incited a mob against Paul and Barnabas and ran them out of town. So they shook the dust from their feet as a sign of rejection and went on to the town of Iconium. And the believers were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Now here in this last verse, it says they were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit, and the, Holy Spirit the believers, it says. They were rejoicing and had a refreshing of joy in the midst of persecution. If you're full of the Spirit, when you're in the middle of any situation that you're facing, you can rejoice and have joy because you have the Spirit that is giving you the joy. Now, it's not any joy in the natural whenever you got bills piling up on top of bills and you got buildings being built. I'm talking about myself and this campus. I built this campus from the, ha the building over there on the corner and half of the one behind it. We call the RMA. And I want to tell you what. There have been a lot of things that come. And it's only because of the man that I lived in his house I grew up with him and I watched him in dire situations. 
I lived a lot of the stuff that he talked about. He said he was, he was, wasn't at the bottom of the barrel. He was under the barrel financially. I was there. I was there. I lived it. But you know what? I never one time saw him lose his joy. I never one time saw, saw, heard him say, what are we going to do now? He just always said, God is God and the word is true and the word will come through. I heard him say it many times. I never saw him lose his joy. I never saw him not refreshed. And I, I got to watching him. Back, way back, I'd do it. I mean, I'd, even when, here, when I was here, I'd go over his house. We might be sitting there, a ball game might be going on, and I'd see his lips moving, and I could tell that he is, he is sitting there praying while he was watching the, watching the football game, me and him were. But I'd seen him do that, for, and, and I'll do that. I'll do, in fact, Lynette will tell you, I'll be driving along, all of a sudden, I'll just blurt out, thank you, Jesus, right? But you see, you've got to keep yourself renewed in the spirit all the time. You have to come back to events like this. This renews you. I, in fact, I just talked to somebody today, said when they came back on this campus, all of it, it was something happened. It, 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 there, there is something there. I want you to be sure and check up on yourself and make sure that you keep your gas, spiritual gas tank yes. up to the full mark. Don't even let it get down to a half full. Keep it all the way full. And you know, let me speak to you for just a moment. There may be some of you that you uh, haven't ever accepted Christ, Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Or maybe you know what it is to, to serve him, but you, you've got off course and started taking a detour and need just to rededicate your life. I'll tell you what, right now, if you'll pray this prayer with me, I'm going to repeat it with, with Lynette. You can become a, a new creature in Christ and you can be rededicated to him. So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I believe he's the son of God. I believe he's the son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. And I believe he arose again from the dead. And I believe he arose again from the dead. And he's alive and well in heaven today. And he's alive and well in heaven today. You said if I would believe these things. You said if I would believe these and things. And confess them with my mouth. And confess them with my I mouth. I would be saved. I would be saved. I thank you now. I thank you now. If you prayed that prayer with us, let us know. And the, the address is right there. Just email us, testimony at rhema.org. You will find yes. that your life will be different. That's right. And heaven is rejoicing. Yes. Uh, honey, we have a great offer this month. Uh, this is six CDs of, of your father's Holy Spirit series. And he was a great teacher on uh, that. He was a great, great teacher on the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is six CDs that uh, deal with the, with the basics. That, and I just want to read these here. The Holy Spirit in you, God's gift to, to, to us, and then what does it mean to be filled? And then he, what good are tongues? He deals with that subject. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about tongues forbidden are encouraged. And then the importation and instruction. And so all of this is here. And this is, a, this is a great, great series for you that maybe don't understand the yes. Holy Spirit or somebody that you know that, that is interested in the Holy Spirit, but they don't understand it. This would be excellent, excellent, excellent. And your book, How to Fulfill Your Divine Destiny. You know, and this is the beginning of a, yes. of a year. And... Um, so many times we need to know how we can fill the destiny now, that God has for us. Actually, this book is taken from several of my little mini books uh, where I, uh, I, was, I was teaching on 
the, you know, destiny and fulfilling what God has for you. And they, they, they put it all together and, and it made an excellent book. It's not just for people that are, it's not for ministry people. This yes. is for people, all people, because God has a destiny for Absolutely. everybody. Every one of you have a destiny <clears throat> and you can fulfill that destiny if you know the biblical principles to do so. That's right. And my CD, Keep the Fire Burning. We have to keep the fire burning in our lives. You know, in the natural, we have to keep the fire burning. That's right. I know, you know, we just completed 58 years of marriage. Yeah, December the 30th. Yeah. And uh, you have to keep that fire burning, That's that spark. Right. Well, the same thing in our spiritual life. We need to keep the fire burning. Yeah. And so that is for a, a gift of $40 or $40 more. $40 or more. Go right now to your computer and, and order it. Doing Rama.org and order it right now. Hey, two weeks. Oh, wow. This year is passing by fast. Too fast. Too fast. <laughs> yes. We're going to have Winter Bible Seminar yes. right here on the campus, February 18th through 23. And of course, the Sunday service begins at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then Monday through Friday, 8.30 service, a 9.30 speaker, a 10.30 speaker, and then 7 p.m. Yes. It's free registration. You can go to rhema.org and you find out all the information. So make plans to be here with us. It's going to be great. I, you know, that's one, this is one of my favorite seminars. Yes. I love this seminar and you will really, talking about keeping the fire burning, I'll tell you what, you will be able to fill yourself up back again so that you can keep the fire burning. Well, hon, until next time, we want to thank all of you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. We, as the Church of God, should bring fire to the church. We are the fire. The church is a place where people should see Jesus. They should want what we have, keeping that fire burning on the inside of you. Keep the Fire Burning, a powerful CD by Lynette Hagen. Also, six essential CDs by Kenneth E. Hagen entitled, Holy Spirit Series. Plus, How to Fulfill Your Divine Destiny, a faith-building book by Kenneth W. Hagen. The book and all seven CDs can be yours today for a gift of only $40 or more by calling toll-free 1-888-PRAISE-8. Or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.